I recreated KSI and Logan Paul's Drink Prime website with WordPress and Elementor. I'm sure you guys have probably already heard of Logan Paul or KSI before, and if you haven't, then you guys can just go look them up. But they came together and made a new drink brand, and this is their website. It's clean, and it's minimalistic, and we're gonna be using WordPress and Elementor to recreate it completely from scratch. Now, I was able to completely recreate this website inside of Elementor, but just to avoid copyright issues for obvious reasons, I'm not gonna be publishing it. The goal of this website is just to show you guys that you can create any kind of website you want with WordPress and Elementor, and that you guys can take popular websites just like this one and use it for inspiration. Just be sure not to copy them too closely, obviously. Now, for those of you who are new to web design, WordPress is what we're going to be using today, and it's the single most common CMS used for creating a website on the internet. And it's also free to use. CMS just stands for Content Management System. Basically, what software people use to make the website and then manage the content that's on it. I hope you guys are looking forward to this video because I sure am. I really had fun playing around with the creative capability that Elementor provides. Now, before we get started recreating the Prime website, I wanted to introduce to you guys a new series that we're going to be doing on the channel, and it's called Website Wednesdays. For Website Wednesdays, I'm going to try and recreate popular websites using WordPress and Elementor to the best of my abilities to show you guys just how powerful these tools can be. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into our first Website Wednesday with how I recreated the Drink Prime website. So the first thing I did in recreating the website is the same thing that I always do when I build any kind of a website, which is gathering all of my images that I need for the project. Now, if I was just practicing and I wanted to use the exact same images as their website, which I definitely do not recommend doing, I could totally just open up Google Dev Tools and inspect the images on their website, and then I could save them to my computer like this so that I could get the exact same result. But again, I don't recommend it. It's kind of like the intro clip that I showed you guys of the exact replica that I built. But instead, what I'm going to be doing is looking at each image on the website, and I'm going to see if I can find something that looks pretty similar, but obviously for the product that I'm selling. Now, I'm making a fake website about a mountain energy drink just because I couldn't think of anything else to be honest. So we're going with a mountain energy drink today. Now after looking through unsplash.com for a bit I found this picture of a leaf taken on the ground of the floor of a forest which I thought was pretty cool so I photoshopped these two cans in there hastily so please do not judge my editing. After that I went ahead and opened up Adobe Dimension and I generated my own product images using cans and bottles as well. I went ahead and just used some of their starter content and created a soda can and then I created a logo from scratch using Logo Maker. I imported that logo into Adobe dimension and then I pasted it on the can and then rendered it out with a bunch of different colors. After that, I did the same thing with a couple of bottles as well so that I would have some variety for product images to use. Again, this is just an example so I didn't really put my heart and soul into making these look absolutely fantastic, so bear with me. Once I had my product images and my hero image, I started on the graphic icons that they use here and here on the website. So from there I just went over to Logo Maker and I created those two icons all in one single picture and then I just downloaded them to my computer. Alright, so now I have all my assets together. Basically, the original website just has one picture on it and then a bunch of product images and icons. So that made the asset collecting very easy for me. Next on the agenda was setting up the website by securing my own domain name and web hosting. So I headed over to Hostinger using my link, which is creatorprowebsite.com slash Hostinger, which also gives you a massive discount on your hosting plan, just an FYI. And from here, I selected the business plan because of all of the additional features that are included with it. So you get daily backups, a free SSL certificate, a free domain name, and so much more. I filled out my billing information and I started the setup process. Once I was finally redirected to my WordPress dashboard, I could go ahead and start actually building the website. I decided to download a free website template so that I could save myself a lot of the setup process for the structure of the website. So I opened up the plugins tab and I downloaded a plugin called Starter Templates, which I like using a lot on the channel. From here, I just looked through their e-commerce platform templates and chose this one right here. After that, I installed the template, which also installs all of the necessary plugins, themes, starter templates, and so much more. Now, if I didn't download that template, I would have had to go and install my own WordPress theme, and then I would have had to download all of the necessary plugins, including WooCommerce, and then I would have had to build the entire website completely from scratch, and all of that would have just taken too long. Once my website template was downloaded, it was time to make the necessary changes to it. So first of all, I can go into my WordPress dashboard settings, and I can change the name of the website because sometimes it changes with the template that you download. After that, I can go into the Pages tab and delete all of the current pages, as well as go over to the Products tab, and I can just delete all of the default products. I'm not going to need any of these anyways. From here, I might as well go ahead and add all of my products to the website really quickly. I'm going to save you the trouble of watching me add all 12 of these products to my website because that's going to take forever. So here comes a jump cut. Three, two, 
one swoosh. So now all my products are on the website and I've cleared out all of my unnecessary pages. I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into Elementor and start making changes to the homepage. And then after editing the homepage, I'll go ahead and add all of the other pages to the website, like the about page, the store page, and the verify your prime page. All right, so now that I'm inside of Elementor, I went ahead and deleted all of the sections of the homepage because I'm just gonna be building this from scratch anyways. So I thought it would just be a lot easier. Now I've got to admit, this was the most fun I've had in a really long time because it took a lot of my expertise to look at their website and try and decide how to translate over all of their sections into the sections, columns, and widgets of Elementor. So that was pretty cool. They originally built their website using Shopify. And you guys can tell because if you check out the source code of the website, you'll see Shopify riddled everywhere in the code. So it's safe to say that they use Shopify. Anyways, back to the website inside of Elementor, I went ahead and started by adding my hero section and throwing in my poorly photoshopped picture into the background. I actually rendered it inside of Adobe Dimension and lazily attempted to add some shadow and color grading to the cans to match them to the original picture. We're just not going to talk about how bad it looks, okay? After that, I went ahead and adjusted the minimal height of the section to match it to about the same size as the Drink Prime website. After that, you'll notice that they only have some text and a button in the bottom left corner of the section, so I went ahead and replicated it myself by adding two heading widgets into the bottom left corner and then copying what the text says. And then after that, I just added a button and customized it to the same color and format as the sample website. All right, right off the bat, I think the hero section is done and it didn't take me that long to do, so I was pretty confident in the rest of the website. Next, I have the first promo section, which is just showing off all of their energy drinks. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to replicate this as close as possible with my products. Looks like they just have one massive heading widget with their super fancy font. If I really wanted to copy the font that they use on their website, I could easily inspect the element on their website and see exactly what type of font they use like this. But I honestly doubt that that exact font is gonna be inside of Elementor anyways, so I'm not gonna do it. Instead, I'll just pick a font that I think looks close enough to it, and then I'll just increase the size as well as the letter spacing and try and kind of match the same look that they were going for. After that, it's just really easy to add five individual columns or containers, depending on if you guys want to use the Flexbox containers for Elementor or if you just want to use the original columns. And then I just add the product images as well as the heading widget, a subtitle, and then another heading widget, and lastly, the button. But after I create just one of these columns or containers, whatever you want to call it, I'm just going to duplicate it four more times and then just change the pictures and text so that they all look uniform. All right, after that first promo section, we have this kind of picture lineup of all of the cans together with these infographics and button on the right hand side. That's going to be really easy to replicate. All I'm going to do is just add my picture on the left hand side, as well as another picture widget on the right hand side, and then a button right underneath it. I'll use my pictures and add a button and then I'm done. So I'm going to add the picture widget on the left hand side, and then I'm going to add a container on the right hand side so that I can vertically stack the second picture and the button. Next is the hydration section, which is basically identical to the energy section right up on top. So I'm just going to duplicate it, drag it down, and then switch out the pictures and text. And then again, the bottle formation right here is identical. So I'm just going to use the one as above and just duplicate it back down because I'm way too lazy to Photoshop another picture of bottles rather than cans. All right, next I'm going to go ahead and scroll on down and they have yet another promo section. So I'm just going to duplicate it again. And then finally, another product spread with more icons on the right. So again, I'm just going to duplicate it because I am way too lazy to Photoshop another picture. Now, if I was really trying to recreate this to be as identical as I could, then I could easily Photoshop more pictures. But to be honest, the Photoshopping takes way longer than the web designing. So you guys are just going to have to put up with my laziness and use a little bit of your imagination. And just like that, the homepage is complete. And it looks pretty much the same as the Drink Prime website. So I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out, and I know that I could have easily made it better if I really wanted to. All right, so the next thing on the agenda is adding the rest of the pages to the website. And you'll notice in their navigation bar that they have five pages on their website. And yes, I said five because there's the four additional pages that they have in the navigation bar, as well as the home page that you're looking at right now, which makes it five. They have a shop page, an about page, a store locator page, and the last page, which is just called Verify Your Prime, which basically just shows you different countries that you can buy the products in. Let's start with the about page. So from my WordPress dashboard, I'm just going to hover over the new button and then click on a new page. I'm going to go ahead and title it About Mountain Energy because that's the product that I'm selling. And then I'm going to publish it so that I can edit it inside of Elementor. I mean, from here, their About page is almost laughable. It's literally just a heading widget and then a text editor widget right below. So I'm just going to go ahead and put down my own About section and then just call it a day. Next is the store locator page, which they call Where to Buy. So again, for my WordPress dashboard, I'm going to go up to that new button and then click on Page. And I'm going to title it Where to Buy. From 
here inside of Elementor, I'm gonna add the heading widget and then I'm gonna add the store locator widget, which is actually just infused inside of a text editor widget for some reason. I, I don't really know why, but I'm not gonna question it too deeply. I'm not really sure why they decided to use the text editor widget instead of just embed their plugin inside of like a short code widget, but you know, that's above my pay grade, so I'm not gonna ask. Now, once my store locator plugin was actually installed, I just had to go and link it to my Google Maps through API keys, and then I can just add as many stores as I want. If you guys are just interested in learning how to use a store locator plugin inside of your website, then you guys can leave a comment down below the video and I might make a video for you guys on it. But for the sake of time and your attention span, I'm just gonna blow through how to set up everything. Basically, I just generated some API keys inside of my Google Maps account and then I linked them to the plugin so that it has access to Google Maps. After that, I can just add a bunch of additional stores and you guys get the idea. They're gonna pop up on the map and people can search based on their address or radius to find the stores. Pretty self-explanatory and simple to understand. Now, lastly, I'm just gonna preview the page to make sure that the plugin is actually working because you won't see it inside of Elementor. So looks like we're golden. I see that it's working now. Finally, you guys can create as many additional pages as you guys need. Now, it looks like for the last menu item is a drop down. It's like this navigation menu to verify your prime page. And you'll see that these are each individual pages. So when you drop it down, you'll see you can click on USA or Canada or whatever you guys want. Each one of those is an additional page. So depending on how many countries you guys want to sell to, you'll have to create an additional page for each one of those countries. And you'll see why in just a second. But for now, I'm just going to create two of these because it's an example. So I'm just going to go with the United States and Canada and you guys can create as many as you need afterwards. So I'm just going to create one page and title it Verify Your Mountain Energy dash USA. And then I'll create another one with Canada on the end instead. Now inside of Elementor, I'm just going to add all of the products that I only want to sell to the United States. And then I'm going to create another page for Canada. And then I'm going to add only the products that I want to sell in Canada. It's pretty self-explanatory. Now that all of my pages are created, it's time to go ahead and edit the navigation menu in the header and then also edit the footer for the entire website. And we're also going to add the sub navigation points for those two pages that we just created, which is the US and Canada. From my WordPress dashboard, I'm going to hover over the appearance tab and then just click on customize. From here, I'm going to go to the menus tab and edit the navigation menu for the entire website. I'll go ahead and just delete everything in the primary menu and then add my own points. And I'm also going to retitle it primary menu. Obviously, I'm just going to add four pages, including the shop page, which is already left there sometimes. So you guys can see if it is. For the last navigation option, I'm just going to add a custom link with a placeholder, which is that hashtag mark, and then title it verify your mountain energy. After that, you guys can just add the last two pages that you created to the navigation menu and then create them as sub points underneath by just dragging them over a little bit. And that's how you guys can make the navigation drop down. It's pretty simple. After that, all we have to do is just finish editing the header and footer of the website and we're pretty much done. So for the header, I'm going to go ahead and just move the logo over to the center, just like they have on Drink Prime. And then I'm going to go ahead and upload my own logo to the website. Then on the right hand side, I'm going to rearrange the icons to match the same orientation as Drink Prime as well. After that, the navigation menu is pretty much complete. Now I can go ahead and move on to editing the footer. So for the footer, I went ahead and opened up the footer builder and then I started tearing apart everything. On the left hand side, I went ahead and changed the text and the title to be about mountain energy. And then I put a little about section in the footer as well. And then after that, I changed the two center navigation menus to be menus that are applicable to my website. And then after that, I left the newsletter signup form on the right hand side, but I went ahead and changed the title to newsletter just for obvious reasons. And then lastly, I just changed the background to black. All right. So now that the header and footer is finished, we can go ahead and preview the entire website because we've completed it. And just to show off, I'm going to show you guys a quick side by side so that you guys can take a look at my website compared to the Prime website. Now, obviously, the title of this video is going to be something along the lines of I recreated Drink Prime's website or something like that. And I definitely recreated it identically off camera and I showed it to you guys in the intro of the video. However, this comparison is to show you guys a little bit more of a realistic view once you guys are done gaining inspiration from a popular website that you like. You obviously wouldn't have any reason to identically copy someone else's website. So this is just to show you guys that you can gain inspiration from someone else's website and still completely use different images for everything. And even this one might still be a little too close to the original website. So you guys might want to make sure that yours looks a little bit different so you don't get in trouble. Obviously, the point of this video is just to entertain you guys and to show you what you can do with Elementor and WordPress completely for free. But looking at these websites side by side, I'm sure you guys can see just what these two softwares are capable of. I'd say I'm pretty happy with the results and I'm hoping that you guys are too. And I hope you guys are satisfied with what you might have learned from this video as well. If you guys liked what you saw in today's video and you want to try building your own website, you've come to the right place. Here at Create a Pro website, we're dedicated to showing you guys how to build websites with WordPress and Elementor for as cheap as possible. Check out this video right here where I show you guys how to build a website from start to finish using the same software that I did in today's video. If you guys want to get your business up and running and online, then I suggest check it out. I'll see you guys in the next video.